Hi everyone, welcome back to Beyond Your Knowledge. Today we're going to be studying nitrate peptide and neprilysin. So, and before we continue, I would like to share with you James 1.12 and says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he stood the test, we receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Amen. Hallelujah. Beautiful word in his name. Well, now, I just would like to explain how, what it is, natriuretic peptide. So first, so you, atrial natriuretic peptide is abbreviated. Oops, I should do this in black. Okay, it's abbreviated as I say, A N P. So this atrial natriuretic peptide, it is secreted by the atrial cardiomyocytes. Cardiomyocytes. Okay. Um. Now, um, this is secreted by the atrial cardiomyocyte in response to atrial stretch. So if that is atrial stretch, it's going to release it, okay? Also, which is indicative that there is a volume expansion. Or expansion, okay, expansion. Okay, now, the internet peptide, so what does do also? It's going to lower your blood pressure. So it's going to lower your blood pressure. How? So because it's going to cause peripheral vasodilation. Okay. Also, it's going to cause natriuresis. Also, it's going to cause diuresis. And all this, this, this. Okay, I just, sorry, I just, I just. Okay, let's see. The atrial natriuretic peptide binds to the natriuretic peptide receptors on where? If you have a receptor, the receptor is going to be where? Do, 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 do. On the membrane. Yeah, on the membrane. You're right. So it's going to bind there. And it's going to activate your guanylate cyclase and um, forming your cyclic GMP. It's going to activate the what? Your guanylate, guanylate cyclase. And forming what is going to form your GMP. So now, what are the organs or what are the tissues that is going to be affected? I just see here. So the organs and tissues. So that the atrial natriuretic peptide is going to work. Okay, so let's see. So let's just see. Uh -huh, there we go. So adrenergic peptide is going to work in organs and tissues. Okay. And what are those? So let's just figure out. So it's going to be the kidney, one of those. So the other one is going to be the adrenal gland. So where does the adrenal gland located? Yes, they are located on the top of the kidney. Also, the it's going to work makes sense because we we're saying the same that it's responsible to drop your pressure. So that's mean going to block. I mean going to work in your blood vessels. There we go. Okay. So let's see blood vessels. Woo! Tamo loco. Okay, sorry. This is español. I just yo hablo español, español. That's okay. Let's just see. Let's just see blood vessels. Um, so the kidney, what does the ANP or adrenergic peptide is going to do in the kidney? So it's going to dilate, it's going to dilate you what your afferent arterioles, ha <laughs> arterioles. Yeah, sorry, sorry, let me just 
just keep okay your arterials also is going to increase Ooh, that becomes da -da -da, what are you going okay so it's going to also increase your glomerular filtration rate your glomerular filtration rate also is going to increase your urinary excretion okay excretion also a urinary excretion of which one? Oh, there we go two things sodium and water okay also atenuante de peptide limits sodium reabsorption so also um your sodium is decrease or yeah so limits its reabsorption which is the sodium reabsorption okay okay um where so this is in the proximal convoluted tubule okay and also in the inner medulla the inner medulla what else in the inner medulla exactly in the collecting duct collecting duct okay okay and also the other function in the kin is going to inhibit so it's going to inhibit <clears throat> excuse me it's going to inhibit your running so inhibit so inhibit the solution before inhibit your running so basically it has several functions so for example you dilate your apron arterioles you're going to increase your glomerular filtration rates increase your urinary excretion of the sodium and the water and then it, it limits the, its absorption of the sodium and also the resorption then works in the PCT proximal component to in the in the medulla of the collecting duct and in the inhibit your renin so what do you think that is going to do now in the adrenal gland so let's figure out so in the let me just do we'll do this here because we don't want to be confused let's figure out what okay let's just do it adrenal gland is going to rest uh, restricts your aldosterone secretion okay restricts you know what i will do a new slide yeah because we don't want to have a mess here i'm just going to copy these two now we're going to do a new slide here and then we can have more room there there we go easy easy so now what's going to happen with the adrenal gland in the adrenal gland is going to restrict so to restrict your aldosterone secretion okay what else do you think that's going to do here um so one time you you restrict your aldosterone secretion you are leading to increase in sodium and water excretion by the kidney so that's mean that these things is going to lead to increase your sodium and your water and your water excretion by the kidney there we go by the kidney so this is our the, the the kidney okay the kidney is uh, something like this okay and the adrenal gland is sitting on the top of each kidney okay there we go now move on so let's just talk about blood vessels blood vessels so what are you going to say blood vessels well blood vessel is easy so we already talked something that is going to relax your smooth muscle relaxes your vascular because it's not a vascular smooth muscles okay in there is very important in where two places arterioles and venules so one of those are going to be the arterioles are red 
And remember, your venules are blue. Okay. What else do you think that is going to do? So it's going to produce. So this is equal. So this is equal to vasodilation. So it's going to decrease your blood pressure. Okay. So also another function that we can mention here, uh, function that is that it increases your capillary permeability. Increases your capillary permeability. Okay. So what do you think that we can mention here? So and then this is going to lead to. This is going to lead to extra, I mean, yeah, to fluid, to fluid extravasation. So fluid extravasation and into where? Into the interstitium. Into the interstitium. And then it's going to decrease your circulating blood volume. And then just do it here. So decreasing your circulating blood volume. Okay, cool. <sighs> okay, all this is about your atrial nitric peptide. But do you remember that when we start, we mentioned that we are going to be talking about atrial nitric peptide and nephrolizing. So let's just talk a little bit now about nephrolizing. So nephrolizing. So nephrolizing first, it is a medication. So the, the, the this is a medication and it is, the nephrolizing is a metalloprotease. Metalloprotease. So that means that it is basically like an enzyme. What it's going to do is going to inactivate several peptide hormones. Okay. So peptide hormones. What are those peptide hormones like bradykinin, like glucagon? Okay, so bradykinin is okay. Like encephalins. Okay, like natriuretic peptide that we were talking about. Uretic peptide. Okay, so and as we already mentioned, so you eat natriuretic peptide, all those things that is secreted by the etrocardiomyocytes. Okay. So, but now, nephrolyzing has an, another name, which is also, we can call, if we have um, nephrolyzing, which um, it is an inhibitor, so it could be an inhibitor, inhibitor, and this one is um, an example, is SACU or SACUBITRIL, SACUBITRIL. Okay, and this one is going to prevent the degradation of internet peptide and hence the beneficial hemodynamic effects in the heart failure patients. So that how does help? So how that help? Well, it's easy. So it's going to nebulize in inhibitors. The example sacubit to prevent. They are going to prevent. So how they're going to how we're going to prevent the degradation of atrial natriuretic peptide. So how they do it? They enhance the beneficial hemodynamic effects. Hemodynamic, hemodynamic effects in where? Heart failure patients. Got it? Well, um, 
so I think that with that in mind we are done for now in this video thanks to God thank you to Jesus we learn you learn we learn so God bless you and we can do all things to Christ and us